On October 29, 2025, the third confirmed interstellar visitor, 3i Atlas, will make its closest approach to our Sun, traveling almost backwards through the solar system at 68 kilometers per second. For weeks, seven space agencies have tracked this mysterious object, yet the best images offer only a faint, unresolved blur and not a single verified fragment. Despite advanced telescopes and frantic monitoring, even basic clues, natural comet or something engineered, remain out of reach. With more than a third of scientists and the public open to the possibility of an artificial origin and experts like Avi Loeb demanding answers, the stakes reach far beyond astronomy. Will 3i slash Atlas survive its sun-skimming encounter, fracture like Comet Shoemaker Levy 9, or reveal evidence of alien intent? The silence is starting to break. On October 2, 2025, in the mid-afternoon at Jezero Crater, Skycam, a wide-field color imager mounted atop Perseverance, was never designed for interstellar hunting. Its job is to track Martian dust, clouds, and the slow crawl of seasons not to chase faint cosmic visitors through the daylight sky. But on this day, the camera's schedule changed. Mallory Leffeland, the rover's shift lead, had argued for it. She knew the odds were long. Daylight on Mars scatters sunlight through fine dust, drowning out all but the brightest features. Even so, she pressed to keep Skycam running, convinced that a single marginal frame might matter. The risk was personal. Every extra image meant more data to store and transmit, more justification to mission managers already stretched by the U.S. government shutdown. But Leffeland insisted, pointing to the window when 3i slash Atlas would cross the field. Just a few minutes each soul, the comet's predicted path barely skimming the horizon. Her call paid off. The image, time-stamped 1417 Mars local time, looked like nothing. A grainy, overexposed sky, a faint green circle drawn by hand in post-processing, and inside it, a single pixel, dimmer than the background, nearly lost in the noise. Most would have missed it. But when the raw frame was compared to predicted ephemeris, the alignment was exact. That pixel, expanded and scrutinized, matched the expected position and motion of 3i slash Atlas as it threaded through the Martian sky. No dramatic tale, no resolved nucleus, just a whisper of light, barely above the camera's detection limit. Yet for the science team, it was enough. The object was real, trackable, and verifiably interstellar. The detection proved that even in harsh daylight, with a camera built for landscapes, a determined operator could catch a visitor from another star. Within hours, word spread through mission channels. The confirmation triggered a cascade. Mars orbiters were tasked to slew. Deep space antennas reallocated bandwidth, and instrument teams scrambled to recalibrate sensors for a fleeting target. All because one shift lead refused to accept the odds. For a few moments, the vast distance between worlds shrank to a single, stubborn pixel. Evidence that 3 slash Atlas was more than a rumor, and the hunt was only beginning. On October 3rd, 2025, a rare alignment occurred above Mars. Seven spacecraft, each with a different vantage point, each tuned for a different slice of the spectrum, were positioned for a single opportunity. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise camera, built for razor-sharp images of Martian terrain, was retasked for a cosmic target. Its field of view, however, is unforgivingly narrow. To catch a faint, fast-moving comet at this distance required threading a cosmic needle with pointing updates calculated to the second. ExoMars TGO, with its KSSIS camera, offered a wider net. Its panchromatic sensor could stack exposures, sacrificing some sharpness in exchange for the sensitivity needed to tease out a drifting speck against a field of stars. Mars Express contributed two spectrometers, Omega and SPICAM, designed for mapping ice and gas on the planet below now searching for traces of interstellar chemistry in the coma of 3 Buanai slash Atlas. Odyssey, tuned to infrared, hoped for a thermal signature, but the odds were low. Most comets are invisible to its detectors unless actively venting gas or dust. Maven's ultraviolet spectrograph, better suited for auroras and atmospheric escape, 
was pressed into service for a handful of opportunistic scans. Each instrument team faced a balancing act, risking routine science for a fleeting, uncertain target. The coordination required was immense. Pointing schedules, data bandwidth, and even power budgets were negotiated in real time, with mission managers weighing the scientific payoff against operational risk. Yet for all this activity, public channels were quiet. No press releases, no real-time data feeds, no dramatic images. The only official word came from Nick Thomas, principal investigator for KSSIS, who cautioned that the target was at least 10,000 times dimmer than anything his team normally tracked. He limited exposures to five seconds per frame, prioritizing data integrity over spectacle. ESA's public animation, released on October 7th, compressed hours of effort into a few seconds of motion. A faint, fuzzy dot drifting across a black field, surrounded by a barely perceptible haze. The nucleus itself remained unresolved, even at this distance. What the world saw was not the comet's heart, but its coma, a pale envelope of gas and dust stretching thousands of kilometers wide. For four days, every agency with eyes on Mars maintained a careful silence. NASA cited the ongoing government shutdown for its lack of updates. China and the United Arab Emirates, both with orbiters in position, offered no explanation at all. Inside the European Space Agency, the debate was visible in the language of their statement. Risk officers warning of preliminary data, science leads invoking the need for interagency review. The result was a gap a moment when the world's most advanced fleet watched an interstellar visitor, yet chose caution over revelation. For now, the only certainty was the scale of the effort and the opacity of what it revealed. Shoemaker Levy 9, 67P slash Churyumov Gerasimenko, and 332P slash Ikea Murakami. Three names that have shaped how astronomers understand a comet's breaking point. In May 1994, Hubble's camera captured a train of 21 icy fragments stretching more than a million kilometers across the remains of Shoemaker-Levy 9 after Jupiter's gravity tore it apart. The tidal forces at play were immense, squeezing and stretching the nucleus until it snapped, each fragment tracing a path that would soon end in Jupiter's atmosphere. The impact scars, visible for weeks, proved that comets can be shredded by planetary giants leaving a legacy written across a world's clouds. Closer to home, Comet 67P slash Shuryumov Gerasimenko offered a different lesson. When ESA's Rosetta probe arrived in 2014, it found a nucleus shaped like a rubber duck, riddled with cliffs, pits, and fragile plateaus. Over two years of close study, Rosetta watched as sunlight triggered cliff collapses and outbursts, exposing the comet's true nature. 67P is not a solid rock, but a loose assembly of pebbles and dust, formed when smaller bodies drifted together and froze in place. Its surface is patchy, with some regions venting gas, while others remain quiet, a recipe for uneven stress. The structure is barely held together, riddled with fractures that make it vulnerable as it swings close to the sun. Rosetta's data revealed that even minor heating or a small impact could send chunks tumbling into space, sometimes with little warning. 332P slash Ikea Murakami, discovered in 2010, demonstrated a third path to destruction, rotational spin-up. Here, the culprit is not a planet's gravity, but the comet's own jets of gas. As sunlight heats the surface, ices sublimate and vent through cracks, acting like thrusters. These jets don't fire evenly. Over time, they can torque the nucleus, spinning it faster and faster. In 2016, ground-based telescopes caught 332P breaking apart, its fragments peeling away in a slow-motion cascade. Calculations showed that the comet's spin period had dropped below two hours, fast enough to overwhelm the weak forces binding it together. The breakup played out over weeks, with each new fragment briefly surviving before fading into the background. These three cases, tidal disruption, internal weakness, and rotational instability 
set the benchmarks for what astronomers expect from a fragile comet. Each mechanism leaves a different signature. A train of fragments, sudden outbursts, or a cloud of debris fanning out from a spinning core. The common thread is unpredictability. Without direct knowledge of a comet's structure or composition, even the best models can only suggest probabilities, not certainties. As 3i slash Atlas approaches the Sun, its fate will be measured against these precedents. Will it hold together, or will it follow one of these well-trodden paths to fragmentation? The answer depends on forces hidden beneath its dusty skin, a reminder that every comet carries its own history of assembly, stress, and survival. On October 29, 2025, at perihelion, 3i slash Atlas will sweep closest to the Sun at 1.36 astronomical units, or 203 million kilometers. Although invisible from Earth, it will be under close watch from every available eye in the solar system. The object's nucleus, measuring somewhere between 320 meters and 5.6 kilometers across, spins once every 16.16 hours. Its surface, dark and porous, vents gas at a carbon dioxide to water ratio near 8 to 1, among the highest ever measured in a comet. Models built on these numbers, calibrated against Rosetta's 67P, and the breakups of ISIN and 332P return a forecast, less than a 10% chance of catastrophic fragmentation at perihelion. The nucleus is large enough, the bulk density high enough, and the measured outgassing steady enough to resist the worst-case scenarios. Sublimation will strip volatile ices from the surface, but internal pressure dissipates through a porous matrix, and the spin rate is far from the critical threshold. No sudden brightness spikes, no secondary nuclei, no expanding cloud of debris, at least not yet. This is the consensus from Mission Control and the modeling teams. But at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, Avi Loeb is asking a different question. If 3i slash Atlas is a natural comet, the playbook is clear. Thermal stress, rotational torque, maybe a slow cascade of fragments, but if it's something else? Loeb points to the absence of clear fragments in images so far, the unusually high volatile content, and the possibility, however remote, that an engineered probe could mimic cometary behavior while hiding its true nature. He invokes the analogy of a technological mothership, a vessel that, when close to a star, might release a fleet of smaller probes. These would be hard to distinguish from natural fragments at first glance, but their trajectories, accelerations, or lack of cometary outgassing could betray a different origin. The Galileo Project, under Loeb's direction, is watching for any sign of anomalous activity. Miniature objects diverging from the nucleus, unexplained flashes, or oddities in the coma's chemistry. The stakes are not just academic. A confirmed breakup, or the sudden appearance of a swarm of mini-probes, would force a re-examination of everything assumed about interstellar visitors. For now, the data favor stability. But the window is open. In November, as 3i slash Atlas emerges from the sun's glare, ES's JUICE mission and ground-based telescopes will resume their search for fragments, outbursts, or something stranger. Each observation will be weighed against the models and against the possibility that, for the third time in a decade, our solar system has received a visitor that refuses to fit the script. Cable news tickers, social feeds, and late-night panels all lit up as 3i slash Atlas neared perihelion. In the days leading up to October 29th, public fascination became measurable. Pollsters at Quinnipiac and Ipsos tracked a spike in search terms and water cooler debates, with one in three Americans surveyed expressing some openness to the idea that at least one interstellar object could be artificial. The number, though striking, is less a verdict than a reflection of a culture primed by decades of SETI, UAP headlines, and the viral reach of Avi Loeb's commentary. Even without direct evidence, the notion of a technological visitor had become part of the mainstream conversation. Inside planetary defense offices, the mood was more procedural than anxious. Risk models, 
updated weekly, showed 3i slash Atlas would clear Earth's orbit by at least 1.8 astronomical units, safe by any standard. Still, contingency desks at NASA and ESA rehearsed their protocols. If a fragment or anomalous object altered course, teams were prepared to issue alerts and begin rapid trajectory analysis. These exercises, routine in the age of near-Earth asteroids, now extended to interstellar visitors, blending real science with a public appetite for extraordinary possibilities. This convergence of public speculation and technical vigilance shaped the demand for transparency. As images and data trickled out, the stakes of clear communication became obvious. Every ambiguous pixel or delayed release risked fueling rumors while every solid detection anchored the response in evidence. In this climate, science and policy became inseparable, each feeding the other's urgency as the world watched a distant traveler sweep past the sun. November brings a new vantage. As 3 di atlas emerges from solar conjunction, the Jupiter icy moon's explorer, JUICE, will have its first clear window. The European Space Agency's mission team has already adjusted the spacecraft's imaging schedule, prioritizing a series of exposures on the inbound leg. Each pass offers a narrow slice of time, with the comet's faint coma just within reach of the wide-angle camera. Engineers have tweaked instrument settings, balancing sensitivity against the risk of saturating detectors with stray sunlight. Behind the scenes, calibration files and dark frames are queued for rapid processing, and the first data packets are slated for public release within days of downlink. On Earth, the anticipation is no less intense. As dawn skies shift in early December, large telescopes in Chile, Hawaii, and the Canary Islands prepare to resume tracking. The Minor Planet Center has issued updated ephemerides, and amateur networks stand ready for any sign of fragmentation. A sudden brightness spike, a cloud of debris, or the telltale signature of multiple nuclei. The commitment to open data is explicit. Every credible detection, positive or negative, will be archived and made available for independent review. For the science teams, this is the critical phase. The models have set their predictions, but only real-time observation can confirm whether 3i slash Atlas remains intact, fragments, or does something entirely unexpected. Each new image, each spectrum, is another chance to catch the comet in the act and to answer questions that, for now, remain open. On October 29, 2025, 3i slash Atlas will pass 200 3 million kilometers from the Sun, its closest approach on a retrograde interstellar path. To date, no confirmed fragments or associated objects have been detected in images from Mars orbiters, the ExoMars TGO, or terrestrial telescopes. Historical precedent shows comets like Shoemaker-Levy 9 and 332p slash Ikea Murakami broke apart under strong tidal forces or rapid rotation. Yet physical modeling of 3IE slash Atlas suggests less than a 10% chance of natural disintegration at perihelion. Faint features seen in recent data remain unverified. As ESA's JUICE and Earth-based observatories prepare for new observations in November and December, public interest remains high with over one-third of Americans considering an artificial origin plausible. The nature of 3 balmine slash atlas natural comet or engineered probe remains unresolved. The next wave of data will test every hypothesis, but for now, only the evidence can lead the way.